Hi, my name is Brian Snyder. I am the pastor of Bower Hill Church in Mount Lebanon, Pennsylvania. And I wanted to talk to you about a question that probably most pastors get quite a lot. And that is, why church? Why should I go to church? What can church add to my life? Um, is there any value in church? Uh, isn't church something kind of outdated? Isn't church something kind of hypocritical where people go to talk about how much better they are than everybody else? Uh, isn't church boring? I would say no to the first two of those questions. I would say no, church is not outdated. No, church is not hypocritical. It's not where people go to hate on gay people and anybody who votes differently from them or where people tell you how to vote. That is not what church is. Is church boring? There you might have us. Sometimes church can be boring, uh, but a lot of good things are like magnesium and vitamins and exercise. And so let's get into the question of why church. Studies show that people who attend church regularly, that's to say twice a month or more, people who attend church regularly live longer and find more joy and happiness and contentment in life. That's an interesting statistic, isn't it? that people would live longer if they go to church. Uh, what does church have that uh, you might take for granted or might not be seeking in your life or might not even know you need in your life? Um, church, like I said, is similar to exercise. It's one of those things that when you do it on a regular basis, it builds up strength in you uh, for your daily living. It gives you a few things that are hard to find elsewhere in our world today. It gives you community. It gives you people who care about you, people who don't pry into your life, but who are there to support you in times of need and in times of joy. Church gives you community. Church gives you ritual. I don't know if you know this, but ritual is a very important human function. Ritual helps us to celebrate transitions and junctures in our lives. Church gives you regular practices that help you to feel in touch with other people and with your sacred source, which we call God, but which goes by many names. So church gives you community, church gives you ritual. Church gives you exposure to ideas that are bigger than your daily grind. You don't find that just anywhere. Church gives you exposure to philosophy, theology, ancient wisdom handed down from our ancestors. Whether you agree with all of it or not, the best churches will help you to think about the ideas that are out there and not tell you exactly what to think. So church gives you community. Church gives you ritual. Church gives you exposure to deep thought or to wisdom. And finally, church gives you something that you find almost no place else in American life today. Church gives you communal singing. Where else do you come together to sing? There aren't many places. Maybe at a ball game, before the game, you might sing the national anthem, but where else do you come together and sing? And I tell you, there is real power in sharing your voice with other voices. And we could go on and find other things that church gives you that you can't find elsewhere. But I wanna dwell upon these things, community, ritual, wisdom, and singing. Now, I was in another parish, uh, up north, up in the Allegheny National Forest, years ago, many years ago. And I was called to the bedside of a dying woman, and my congregation has heard this story before. I've told it many times. I did not know this woman. She was at the hospital. The hospital didn't have a chaplain, and so they called the local pastors. They called me to her bedside, and they said she was dying. We don't want her to be alone. She has no family. We can't locate anybody. Um, can you just be with her while she dies? And of course, I didn't know what to say or what to do at this woman's bedside. Nobody knew really who she was. They knew her name, but that was pretty much it. And so I held her hand and I thought, well, I'll recite the 23rd Psalm. I'll say the Lord's Prayer and I'll recite the Apostles' Creed on a loop. <laughs> I'll just go over them all three again and again. And when I came into her room, she was dying. She didn't seem to be conscious but she was very tense. She was very stressed. You could tell she was under, um, under a lot of tension. And so I held her hand and I began to recite the 23rd Psalm, the Lord's Prayer, the Apostles' Creed, and her breathing started to slow and she started to calm down. 
and she started to relax into her own death. And I don't want to make myself the hero of that story. I want to make the hero of that story into whoever it was that planted in her life those words of comfort and hope that would come back to her at the end of her life and usher her into the next life. She recognized those words. Somebody gave them to her long ago, some church somewhere, even though she no longer had any church affiliation. That came back powerfully and led her on to the next life. That is the power of church. That is the power of ritual. That is the power of words. That is the power of wisdom and ideas that I think we need more of in this life of ours, in this 21st century post-COVID world. And so I would suggest to you that you try church. Church might be like broccoli. You know, you hated it as a kid, but you love it as an adult. Church could be something that you could try once a month, or maybe find out when your friends are going and go when they go. But ease back into church. It will be good for you. It will be good for our world. Thank you.